Okay, uh, so today we will discuss about uh, data validation uh, using uh, great expectations. And let me just share my screen. So what do we mean uh, data validation, right? Uh, before we uh, try to send our data to uh, a machine learning model, to make sure that uh, it's valid. Uh, valid in a sense, uh, it should be, uh, or it should make sense, right? For example, uh, if we have an edge caller, uh, that it uh, has to be positive, right? Uh, and also to be logical, um, age of a person must not be, I don't know, greater than uh, 100, maybe some exceptions. So we need to handle uh, those logic. That's what uh, data validation means. Um, also, sometimes uh, some column uh, in, in a categorical column. Uh, some data might be, uh, or some value might be inside that column. So we need to identify, or we need to make sure that that categorical uh, column contains specific values, right? Uh, when it comes to, for example, um, a column called sex, uh, it might contain male, female, other um, we don't have um, a category called maybe apple uh, for the sex column, right? So we need to make sure that we have those uh, values uh, in the, the correct value in a, in a correct format. Uh, I hope that's clear. Uh, am I audible to you guys? Okay, um, so let me just share my screen. Uh, first, uh, to get the data, it, it might come from different sources. Right? If it's uh, a local data, um, we can read it as a Panda data frame, and then we can convert that uh, Panda data frame to uh, a great expectation uh, that kind, or if it's uh, from a cloud, we have to connect or bring that data uh, into great expectations. Uh, if it's like uh, Postgres uh, SQL service, uh, we have to also uh, connect that to our validation uh, code, right? So. Uh, there are different ways. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is to uh, install great expectations uh, using uh, pip install great expectations. That's what you need to do. Um, and the next step is to instantiate uh, a great expectation project. Uh, since I don't have any here, uh, this, what we will do is, let me open the terminal. Okay, let do that. All right. So what, what we'll do is we will uh, instantiate it by saying uh, great expectations uh, in it, right? When we do that, it will create uh, a folder called GX here uh, with uh, a different initial uh, for the different settings, as you can see, Create the expectation. Uh, we create a new directory with the following structure. 
great expectations where is great expectations dot yml that's the configuration file and expectations checkpoints plugins etc right as you can see here uh, is it not here uh oh uh I didn't say it as you can see okay to proceed so I will press open. Um, as you can see, there is a folder called GF with this folder stack. So if you do that, we have the, the checkpoints right? and the expectations. Um, so that uh, it says you can customize your config in many different ways. You can add uh, a great specification at that point. Um, checkpoint, docs, etc. Uh, so for now, to connect to Postgres, the first thing is we need to get the context. So we say JS, get context. Uh, let me run this one. So we have context. A context is just a configuration for your uh, uh, great expectation uh, validation. It will contain the different uh, the data the checkpoints. So to our post data, if you remember that time, uh, we will um, I've loaded my environment uh, Postgres uh, QA database and I can uh, or it's a put so to put the environment that's the Name the uh, and then the password, the port, the port, and the database name. So we have that connection. Uh, we can run to get the uh, the source dot this is for and then Sorry, it's just connection. Is my screen visible? Okay. Uh, where did I stop? Can someone tell me? Matthews? Or Yabsra or Yadisa? No. Uh, okay. Uh, let me start from the connection. That that that's fine. Uh, installation part. 
really okay uh sorry so as i said first we need to install uh, great expectations uh, by saying like uh, pip install uh, great expectations since i already installed it uh, the requirement is satisfied right once we do that uh, what we will do is uh, we will instantiate a great expectation project uh, and to do that let me just delete this one since i already created it so to instantiate that we will say a great expectation in it when you do this um, a folder or a project for the great expectation will be created here so with this folder structure so we say yes we want to continue as you can see we have a folder with this uh, different subfolders like checkpoint expectation plugins profilers etc right and once you do that uh, you can customize your configuration by running the the different uh, commands like you can uh, create a, a new data source a new checkpoint uh, a suit etc right uh, but here we since we want to use a postgres uh, database what we will do is we will first create a connection string and then try to connect it so uh, first i will i will create a context a context is just uh, a configuration file right uh, so we we're going to change that by default you will have um this this great expectations uh, configuration file and if you open that it's not configured yet um, when, when you run the different uh, configurations it, it will it will update it so to connect to postgres yeah i'm i'm audible i think uh just like we did before uh in the telegram i mean telecom data analysis uh, i set the uh, i mean the environment variables and then i create a connection string a connection string postgres plus psycho pg2 uh, username for the database password for the database the host the port and the database right so I will have that connection string and then <clears throat> using that connection string i can create uh, a data source a data source for great expectations so we say pg data source is equals to context dot source dot add postgres add postgres right so this will be our data uh, source we give it a name and then the connection string. The connection string is PG connection string, which is this one. So once we run that, uh, now we can add the asset or the, the, the table name, right? If you remember, uh, we have a database called either telecom database or whatever, whatever the database name. And in the database, we have a schema, the public schema usually, and then we have uh, a table name, which was xdr underscore data, right? So we add uh, our uh, asset, and then uh, we create a batch batch request, which means uh, to to uh, get the data, we need to get it batch by batch, and then we create expectations this is the uh, important part what, what's an expectation uh, as i said earlier uh, to validate the the data we expect something right we expect the data to be 
uh, in some format or uh, it should satisfy some condition, etc. Right. So those are our expectations. So we need to make sure that our expectations is satisfied by the data. Right. So to, to do that, uh, we create suits. Suits uh, or a suit is just a collection of the expectations, right? So uh, uh, I, I gave it a name that's telecom analysis, and then uh, a context dot add, add or update. Uh, if if it doesn't exist, it will add. If there is no any expectation, it will add the the the, the suit. Otherwise, it will update the suit. That's what it means. Add or update expectation suits. And then you pass the expectation name, which is telecom analysis, right? Uh, once we have the uh, suit, we create a validator. And the validator will take the batch request that we created above, which is the, the basically the database, and then the expectation suit name. So if we run this, uh, as you can see, it gets the data, right? It, it the the barrier ID start start MS etc. Right. So we want to validate this one, but um, we are not going to do that uh, because most of the uh, data, the the only thing that we can validate is if there is a non value, uh, we have to do something about it that's the only thing i can see on this data here the main objective is how to uh, connect your postgres database to your great expectation that's that's what i want to show you all right so once you have that uh, you can create the expectation now we have the validator right uh, it's it's like a data frame you can consider it like that so we expect columns to be not to be null right so we want the column values not to be null there are different expect let me let me just add one cell here and validator dot if you do that there are different um expectations um where are they uh, uh, you can you can find it uh on the uh official documentation of uh, great expectations there is a glossary for it for the different uh expectations uh, in, in here we have two uh, for one is the, the values of certain columns should not be null and a column value has to be between uh, some numbers etc right so this what it will do is uh, there is a column called last location name right that column must not be null that that's that's what I'm telling it right so if there is uh, a null value in that column, it will, uh, I mean, the success will be false. Otherwise, if all the values in that column are uh, not null, it will uh, be true. It will be true. All right. Um, and this one, as I said, I want to set the values to be between zero and a thousand. Other than that, it should uh say uh, the success is false so if i run this as you can see it's successful it satisfies between uh, i mean both the expectations this column has no null value and the, the values uh, of uh, start ms is between uh, zero and uh, a thousand zero and a thousand if you go to the database and change uh, the value of this start ms 
to some negative number and if you run this the this status will be uh the, the success will be false uh these are the number of rows and <clears throat> it it will uh, the missing count uh, that's probably uh for this one the not null one there is only one null uh maybe i should run it separately let me run this one as you can see the this location it's not success is false which means there are null values in this column right when that happens you can you can uh, do actions that means um either delete it or uh, something else you can perform something or basically in a data pipeline uh, what you do is you will first alert uh, the uh, data engineer to um to act on it you you, you can send uh, an alert message either via message or uh, gmail or uh, slack that can also be done right so as you can see uh, unexpected count there are around 1151 null values and that accounts almost 0.76 percent does that sound right uh raise the exception false this is a big number huh maybe that 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 might be true uh, you you can check the data and if i run this expectation i want this column to be between zero and uh, this amount and if i run it as as you can see uh, it's true uh, uh, we should have uh, what you call it mo mostly if if we it means uh, maybe let me add it here uh, mostly i think Uh, is that yeah um, uh, you, you can you can check uh, there is a condition that you can set uh, if it, the, the variation uh, is like greater than uh, 0 0.01 percent or if it's within uh, 0 0.99 percent or 99 percent you can uh leave it otherwise you have to uh, alert the, there is one argument here uh, i forgot it yeah um and then you can you can save this uh expectation expectation suit suit we we call it suit because we have two right we wrote two expectations between and also not null right so we can uh, save them, you can do that. And then um, you can, once you, you validate it, you can save the checkpoint, the, the, the place where you uh, validate. So to do that, you, have, you, you can create a checkpoint with a checkpoint name, which is uh, like intermediate checkpoint. I believe using Kedro, uh, you are asked to um, get the data in different layers, right? The the raw data, the primary, uh, the the feature layer, etc. Right? That that those can be checkpoints, right? First, you uh, try to see the the raw data, and then from that you do uh, the ED analysis, and you might. Uh, perform some uh, data cleaning and after that you validate it right you check if it's logical right so you do that and then you save that checkpoint right and then you go to the next one so 
uh, th this is what uh, it means. Uh, th these are the only thing that you need to change is the the, the checkpoint name. The others are like um, uh, default, or even you can change them. Uh, like what actions do you want to do? Like update data, doc actions, uh, etc. And then uh, we add the checkpoint to the context, and then we save it. Uh, if I run this, now it's inside the context. And then uh, earlier, as, as I told you, the the the, the expectation uh, telecom analysis, not not that one. Uh, YAML file. This will be. This will change, right? So to to see that configuration file, uh, you can run that, and then you can see it's the the name is uh, intermediate checkpoint, uh, and the module the model name uh, where is the the batch that's PG data source, and the data asset name that's uh, Postgres Telecom data etc those are the configurations you can do it manually uh, by writing a yaml file but this uh, context will create those configurations uh, and then uh, you can build and view the documentation right the, the all the things that we have been doing actually we only did two things right we check uh, if the last location time is not null and also the start ms is between zero and a thousand those are the only things that we did but if you do more uh context i mean expectation or validation uh, you will have um lots of documents right so once i built it either you can click this one or you can open it uh, using this context.open uh, data doc <clears throat> I think it's opened now. Uh, where is it? Uh, this one. So this is the, the the report or the documentation, right? So if you click the show the workflow or the works the works group, no, not this one. Uh, the expectation suits. Uh, we we take we have the Telegram data analysis suit. And we have two things that we did, right? The expectation should con uh, currently contains two total expectation uh, across two columns. The first one is location, a uh, last location name, and the value must no, uh, uh, never be null, right? That's the condition that we put. Again, the start MS that has to be between zero and a um, hundred. Can you see it clearly? Yeah. So you you, you get a, a, a documentation that you can explore and see what uh, you have done or um, for for you did for your uh, validation. You you can have a, a, a documentation like this one. Uh, basically, if you are using a local data. Uh, we will we will use a different approach, uh, but this is the the, uh, the uh, what you call it the standardized way because usually we create a data pipeline, right? You you can connect uh, or validate different uh, cloud data sources, and for that you need to use this approach. I hope that's clear. Is it clear? Is the idea clear? Any questions? Hello? Okay. I need you guys to ask questions, otherwise, it's not gonna help you. No questions? Okay, uh, let, let's try to 
see the steps one by one for uh, a local uh, data. So uh, I need to create the context, as I said earlier, I will add the context. And for the, the data source, uh, no, I, I don't need this. Let, let's start from reading the, the data. Um, here I have a data frame, the insurance data frame, that if you remember, uh, let me go there, this data, the age six, IBM children, uh, BMI, uh, children, smoker region and charges, right? So if I look at it, the F dot head, uh, that's the data, right? And then we convert this data into uh, an expectation uh, data frame. That means GX from pandas, then we pass the data frame, right? That's clear, I believe. Now, these are the expectations that I want to check, right? Uh, plus, let me put it here. Now, uh, expect columns to exist. Uh, you can pass uh, edge, it should exist, edge should exist in that column. Uh, no, expected column to exist. Uh, seek, no, column and name equals edge, and then uh, we pass the, the list. What we want is um, male and female, basically, in this one. Male and female. Uh, is it a seat or? Ah, uh, why is it like that? Okay, GEDF dot um, expect column expect column to exist uh, you see all these are the uh, some expectations the, like this one the max to be between the mean to be between the median the the mean etc you can you can experiment with those uh, what i want is column to exist uh, to exist exist why is it not go to the definition no definition Column, make it column and it's column. Uh, in, oh, this one. Uh, oh, column and. Uh, if it was a Jupyter notebook, we could have, uh, let, me, let me just do this using Jupyter notebook. That's easier. Uh, desktop, yeah, with four and data validation. Okay, I need to create a new one. Uh, 
Um, yeah. Can you see it? Import grid. Uh, this one would write expectations as GX. Import and thus as PD. Uh, great expectations. Oh, underscore, sorry. Okay, let me just quickly copy them. Now uh, we import a context. Uh, no, I don't need that. I, I think I need this. Okay, I get that data. All right, and ge underscore df dot exist uh, df dot expect. Uh -huh. What we want is expect columns to exist and if we run this uh sorry what what's going on shift not found Okay. All right. So this is uh, why we, what we want to pass: self column and column index. Um, argument. It's a string. Other parameters. Uh, that's the column name, okay. What about column index? Uh, all right, um, that's not what I wanted to check, but, and it says false, why? Oh, this was supposed to be small. Yeah. So we can we can check if we have the the edge column or not. That that's that's what this do. And uh, column value, for example, I want the I I M B or B M I. What do you call it? B M I. Uh, B M I has to be between. Um, I don't know, zero and hundred something. It, it can't be negative, right? Can it be negative? No, it's a ratio. So, if we do that, uh, as you can see, it's false. Uh, this, oh, between zero and 10, right? We have, a, a total of uh, 100, no, the count is 1,378 values are out of this range. 100, and now it's true, right? It's true, which means every number of this column is between uh, zero and hundred, zero and hundred. Um, and then once you do that, you come back to them. 
and you can see the validations and that's for the first one and to exist and I mean, no, maybe that's because I run it twice. That's good. Okay, yeah, it, it was compressed. That's the reason. Um, maybe I should that. Yeah, um, all the expectations are here. Uh, this one, zero and hundred one. Yeah, this is a JSON file. You can you can pretty it if you want. So that is what you can do is uh, great expectations. Uh, where is it? Uh, so you can experiment with uh, GEDF dot expectations. You can you can uh, call them and distinct values to be in set. Now you can check this is this is what I want to show you earlier, uh, Coleman edge, a small, right? And then uh, we pass uh, male and then female. If I run this, uh, what is that? Male, female. Is it a set? Argument follows cure arguments. Yeah, maybe it's, it should be a set because it should be unique. Value sheet. Uh, okay. Observe it value. Value sheet. So, what's the value sheet? Column distinct value sheet. My column. And so, why is it not working? Uh, maybe we don't need this. Should be a list. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, as you can see, it's false because the edge column, it's not just uh, male and female. There are some other, uh, no. All right. Okay. Good. I think this this will make it clear. Here, what I want to check is I want to check in this column and there are only male and female, right? As you can see, it's true, right? Now, uh, if I change the data uh, from this. Uh, let me change this one to something like above it. right so this is not a valid data because there is no uh, category called above it. so if i run this now this will be false and the missing count will be one right so if i do that as uh, I need to load the data again. Uh, 
Ah, so you can see it's false, right? And why it didn't give the missing count? It's it says it's null, but this was supposed to be one. Um, but if I include above here, then this will be true. As you can see, it's true because there is also a, a category called above. So you can check things like that. If I run this, this will be false because there is no uh value called up ever so you can you can experiment it it's very powerful uh and there are a lot of ways to uh validate your data i hope that's clear is there any question hello am i audible okay any questions? Uh, no, it's clear. Okay, thank you, Junior. All right, then uh, we will stop here. Uh, I will I will share you the the document later. Yeah, have a good evening. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.